today I'm hanging out with Tyler Merkley. Tyler is a three-time NCAA All-American with a highest finish of second place. Tyler is the school record holder at Penn State with a PR of 73.67 meters. He has qualified for the USA Championships on four separate occasions and was a Olympic Trials finalist. Tyler is also the third best weight thrower in Penn State history with a PR of 22.05 meters. Tyler is also a five-time Big Ten medalist with four times being the championship runner-up. Tyler's story is one of tenacity. In spite of hardships such as injuries and coaching changes, he can still achieve his goals. Tyler is living proof that you can turn your disadvantages into an advantage if you just believe in yourself. Things that you did well as an athlete, what, what advantages, what things do you feel like is your niche? Like how did you get success um, as a thrower? I think there's a couple things. Like the first thing that always comes to my mind is just like being the youngest in a family of throwers, I feel like is to be a really big benefit. Um, my oldest brother always reminds me of that, always. Um, I think that's a huge benefit, just being able to, I'm a very visual learner too, mm -hmm. so being able to watch it for years, because like when they were throwing, it wasn't like I like jumped in right away, mm -hmm. I was just kind of always there. Like I would like... So like learning my, by osmosis. You yeah, because I... Seeing with the big brothers. I remember were. like, because I, I would go to practice, because my, my dad uh, would coach my brothers in high school, and so then... I would be there, but my dad wouldn't let me throw with them because that would take up ring time from them, and it was just kind of useless to having me throwing at the time, really, because <laughs> it was just like it was kind of the time thing, and it was like yeah. high school practice, and I was I think either just starting junior high, yeah. or, no, I was in high school when they started throwing, so yeah, so like I was around it, take our ring time, pretty yeah. much, yeah, and so like I was, I remember like shagging in the field, and I was like throwing back, and I tried to throw them as far as I could back, and just keep them. So I was, I was like getting, the hand. I was like getting reps with a one six at like you know in high school with discus, and so I was like throwing it back, throwing it back, and uh, like I remember I would like try to do like a little like South African throw back, and I remember yeah. like you know in high school they have like every ten feet marked yeah. out, and I'd like was like oh I threw that one twenty feet. 20 feet. This is huge. <laughs> and I was like, check. And then as I got better, I couldn't throw them back as yeah. hard because I started throwing them towards them too much. Yeah. And, yeah. But so that was, I think that's a huge benefit I had is just being around it mm -hmm. and being a visual learner, yeah. super beneficial. How many brothers do you have? Just two. Two. Yeah, all spaced out three years apart. Okay. So like a so nice you have a, some memories of like senior brother and freshman brother type of thing. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Yeah. So that was cool. Um, the uh it was nice because when my oldest brother left for college like we didn't do hammer at all like we didn't really know what it was but then when my oldest brother got recruited they're like hey you should do hammer because he was a good shot disc thrower but you know national wise he was you know the good end of average mm -hmm. and so they're like you should do hammer and he's like well, i don't even know what that is so they went and they taught him a little bit not that the hammer coach that he was at was anything special mm -hmm. he was a decathlete so like the Catholics don't know much about <laughs> throwing hammer, so, um, so like typically it, no, yeah. So it went, you know, it went as good as you'd think. But then because of that, then my middle brother started throwing hammer. He trained with uh, Connor McCullough Senior, technically also a junior, but junior was throwing yeah, yeah. at the same time. Yeah. And so like they got that type of stuff. I was never there for those lessons. Um, but then my dad would come back and teach me a few things. So I remember I just like little doses and then being able to then start with like Sean McGinley and mm -hmm. go from there kind of thing. I think that was a huge benefit for sure. And then, I mean, I don't think many people see this as a benefit, but I think being small is a benefit mm -hmm. and it's not anything to the physicality side. It's all about the mental side because everyone tells you you suck because you're small. Okay. Yeah. And I've always had a pretty healthy chip on my shoulder. Still do. Yeah. You know, <laughs> still do. Um, and so I think it's always been beneficial because it's like, well, I don't have any levers to lean on, mm -hmm. so I have to be technically proficient to do mm -hmm. well. So I think, you know, if you want to be at a certain level when you're small, like you got to make the choice. It's like, you're either going to go be average the whole time and talk about how you could be great or you make technical changes and you go 
try to do it. So it's yeah. like, I see it as a little bit of an advantage just because I feel like it made me work at technicality. And I think it's like kind of a couple advantages mixed in yeah. one. Yeah, for sure. Like I think uh, like being a pretty technical thrower throughout like throughout high school and then even to college, I think that was some of the things that kind of set me apart. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I've, I've never been biggest, strongest, fastest, but pretty decent most, but yeah. you know, never, you know, I, I would say if you put me on like a chart scale, I'd be, you know, top of average physicality wise, but never on like upper echelon of most stuff. Yeah. Be like peaking there. You know, I love good competition, but <laughs> yeah. I'd say, I mean, you're strong, but like I said, it's not, not this advantage. Yeah. Um, compared to, you know, yeah, it's just kind of, it's there. just kind of like what you have to have, yeah, you know, yeah. it's just one of those things. I feel like I'm always as strong as you need to be, but never like, wow, like he has all the power in the world. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, a little bit, but not really. <laughs> <laughs> depends, it depends on the time. <laughs> so I think those are, those have been pretty good advantages that I've been able to kind of have. So you say like you're, you're a visual learner, like how yeah. soon, how soon did you realize that's how you were? Or? Um, how, how have you like tapped into that to, <laughs> to pick it up? And the first time I can remember you saying that is when I was learning discus in high school. My dad told me to read Veston's paper, mm -hmm. and I told him I did. I obviously didn't. <laughs> okay. And he was like, "Did you read it?" And I was like, "Yeah." And he goes, "What did you think about it?" I go, "It's great. It's good. It's good paper." <laughs> and then he's like, "Do you remember this?" And I go, "Oh, really? You sit down there? I don't remember." And he's like, you didn't read it, did you? I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and I, my dad always gave me things to read because my dad reads a ton. Mm -hmm. So he'd give me things. He's like, let's learn. Like, read this. And I mm -hmm. was like, all right. Yeah. And then I was like, can we just watch a video? And he's like, that's not all you have to do. Like, and he's like, yeah. kind of you know, trying to lecture me to be better. And I just, like, it's kind of how I tapped in. Just, I have kind of a disdain for reading, even though, like, to be good in anything, you got to read. So <laughs> it's kind of like a little bit of an Achilles heel at times. <laughs> But um, definitely that was kind of the starting point of it. And then just like, you know, through school and through sports, I've just noticed mm -hmm. that like if I can see it happen, it just registers in my brain so much better. And I can kind of have that mental image of being like, oh, this is what I'm seeing. And then trying to like develop a feel for it mm -hmm. and like being able to reference back a few times. And I was never, I would say when I, when I got to Penn State is when I really started using film. Mm -hmm. Um before that, you know, I'd, I'd had it at times. We'd look at things. And I was like, yeah, cool, 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 cool. And I just relied on feel most mm -hmm. of the time. Yeah. And then, like, and then, like, visual of, like, coaches doing drills. And I'm like, oh, that's how it's supposed to look. Okay. Yeah. And I just try to mimic that. Gotcha. Um, but then I think it's kind of progressed to where I can now look at film and be like, okay, we need this, this, and this. Yeah. Like, sometimes, you know, there's certain things I got to, like, watch over and over and over. Mm -hmm. But definitely I think that's, like, one of the stronger suits of, like, if I can see it, I can hopefully start to make sense of it. How long does it take? Who knows? <laughs> but, so you weren't like a side by side. You weren't like looking at your throws and then your good Schultz. Throws. Um, Tom, yeah. at, at, I, I did a few times, but it never really like, I don't know. It didn't like do like a crazy amount for me. Mm -hmm. I kind of did it just like not the technically advanced way because mm -hmm. I would like watch you know, whoever's through over and over again. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay. And then I go look at mine. I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> yeah. And I go back and I'd watch that one. So it would have been easier if I just did it side by side. <laughs> so who, but, who would you say you, you modeled yourself? Obviously you said your older brothers, but yeah, a lot of, is there anyone you kind of gravitated um, towards? Growing up, I was kind of whoever my coaches told me to model myself after. Anyone in particular? Um, name any names? And Discus, my dad loved Gerd Canner. Okay. Um, so, he would always have me. He, you know, he just loves Greg Canner, so yeah, we'd watch yeah. a lot of Greg Canner stuff. Um, watched a little bit of Mac Wilkins stuff, but never really was the way I threw in discus. Hammer, I mean, just a lot of uh, basically like every old Hungarian when I was in high school. And then as I, uh, you know, progressed, it was a couple different ones. You know, a lot of like tour coached people at some point, kind mm -hmm. of just like evolved with the coaches that I had mm -hmm. and the way that they kind of had their technical model mm -hmm. and then I would try to look at just trying to like bridge that gap between like what the coach was trying to get me to do. What did people that ran that system look like? Mm -hmm. And then how do I implement it? I don't know if there's one thrower I've always loved watching. Not that I really throw too much like him at all 
is uh, uh, Prismos Cosmos. Okay. I yeah. love watching Prismos. That's just like... What do you love? Why? It's just so smooth. Okay. You know? I don't, <laughs> I don't know what it is. It's just yeah. like... It's one of those things like every time I watch them, I mean, just yeah. the ball just moves so well. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, it's just pretty dynamic. I mean... Yeah. You can throw over 80 meters that many times. Yeah. Like, you know, he's doing something right, right? So... Yeah, yeah. His, his flow of... You know, turn to turn, like how he accelerated. Just super, it, just relaxed. Super shoulders. smooth. Yeah. And it's just like, yeah. and also that uh, the the time on the was it, yeah the Olympics when he won the Olympics was just like wow, that was cool. Yeah, that was, was a cool awesome. throw. <laughs> you know, so yeah. like I don't know. I just, yeah. I have that that video replay in my head a bunch of times. I know uh, when I was in high school, uh, Sean would try to get me. He would talk about Prismos occasionally, so I was like, oh, interesting. And like you would talk about like Kevin McMahon, which I don't think we throw too too much alike. Mm -hmm. We're just both short. <laughs> really, is the <laughs> biggest thing. Um, so I, there's definitely because it's funny. There's a lot of people who are like I have I like these five throwers is what I go to all the time. Mm -hmm. Like over the last two years with us working together, like I've done a whole bunch more looking. I mean, I've, I've watched Yuri in the past, right? Mm -hmm. Like you just watch it, and so like, yeah. but the last few years, like watching different things Yuri does, watching different things Lifnov does, mm -hmm. like just looking throughout the Soviet throwers, right. just be like, what are they doing? Yeah, right. You know, yeah. and how do I mimic that? Yeah. Cause it was just like a style that at the time I kind of had to switch my mind a bit. Mm -hmm. So like at first I was looking at, I was like, <laughs> what are they doing? Like, I, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so like, and as we like worked together, I was like, okay, this, this makes sense. This makes sense. Why does that look that way? It doesn't make yeah. sense at all. Yeah. Like, and you know, yeah, and we've worked through that. No, I had I had a little bit of a disconnect from how I learned it, and then it was, um, well, this is this is how Sadiq throws, and then I went to Sadiq, and he's like, "That's dumb. That's not what I do. That's not what I think about at all." I'm like, "Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know." So I was like, uh, and so I'd watch the video, and they'd have whatever, um, and yeah, there there was it was separate from what he would say. And what it looked like he was doing to a degree yeah. and what was modeled. So I was like, oh, there's, there's something in here that, you know, I got to get from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Yeah. Because, yeah. That's, I, I would say that like Sadiq was almost the model of American throwing based yeah. on just stills. Yeah. You know, like the flip book stills of him throwing like, oh, you got to be in this position at this time yeah. and stuff. And, and so he's like, no, 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 that's not what I'm thinking about yeah. it at all. Especially, <laughs> you know? I mean, and really in any, I mean, there's a couple throws that maybe a couple positions are more valuable than most, right. but like, you know, in hammer, <laughs> if you're looking for a position, you right. kind of miss the, yeah, miss yeah, the target. Exactly. But, so, but I do think having the coaches I've had throughout the years, I feel like I've gotten a pretty wide range of styles and mm -hmm. I've kind of been able to, to blend a lot of like the good things together. Yeah. No, that's, that's something I, I wanted to, you to touch on is you've had success with multiple coaches that are very different styles. As yeah. far as <laughs> education and technique and yeah. you know, training styles and I think yeah yeah what, what do you think is like the guiding force? How did you um, get better with multiple coaches? The, I think the central thing is I always wanted to be as good as I could be. I mean, I wanted to win everything. Mm -hmm. Not really that I won most anything, mm -hmm. but I always did want to win everything I was in. Mm -hmm. And so it was kind of like, well, we're here, and you know, every coach I was at. I went to him for the reason to throw far. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, okay, what do we need to do to throw far? Like, mm -hmm. Tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And then like, yeah, as I started to learn what they wanted, you know, then I could be like, okay, this is what you want. How, and I think I'm doing it this way. How do we do this way? You know? mm -hmm. um, I would say when I was at <laughs> Kansas state with Watson, I uh, was a lot younger and a lot dumber and had never changed a coach before. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a lot of like, I don't even know what he's saying. <laughs> so it was like just learning that. Um, I think being older, being at Penn State, having had time to kind of mature a bit, mm -hmm. that helped a lot of like building how to communicate. Yeah. Because like, and a lot of, I, I know we've talked about this before, but I think a lot of like what athlete coach relationships is, you have to be speaking the same language. Yeah. Yeah. And for the most part, so many coaches are saying roughly similar things if they're at mm -hmm. a certain level right yeah. like you know but they you know they may say it this way or they may like the wording of this you know aspect this way mm -hmm. and you know just not knowing exactly what they mean by it and then learning kind of their language mm -hmm. of throw yeah. is i think 
super valuable. And so being older, having went on that church mission and like spoken to people for two years straight, I had to learn how to talk to people. Yep. I think that helped me a lot in throwing because it was like, oh, I, I can, I'm better than I once was at yeah, like, yeah. communicating. Well, that's, so I think that helped a ton. Yeah. And I'd say too, like you, if a coach is telling you to do something, there's a reason for it. Right. Like, so yeah. you're just trying to get on board with that reason. It's like, Hey, yeah. you're having this, like, can I, can I help fill in the gap somewhere in here? I know you, you know, sometimes there's frustrations where you're just yeah, like, I mean, clearly I don't it, understand what's going on, you know, and I, there's I'm, a, I'm, <laughs> you know. my dad has always told me that I am one of the hardest athletes he's ever coached in his life, <laughs> which I mean, I'm like being able to be older and look back at, yeah, I sucked a lot, <laughs> but it was all just based out of like either like frustration that I wasn't doing well or mm -hmm. like frustration that I wasn't understanding it. Yeah. It's a lot of like yeah. just, just wanting to exceed at a high level. You know, I demand a lot out of myself, so mm -hmm. I always try to demand as much as I could out of the people that I was doing it with. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, sometimes people like, some people hate it. So <laughs> it's a hard. It's a yeah, hard yeah. And I say, I say, the takeaway is, yeah, just try to, like I said, be on the same page. You yeah. know, whatever that is. Like, there's probably a reason a coach is doing something. Trying to understand that reason will help. Reason will help you be better. And I think that's kind of been the the theme, at least when I picked up coaching. Yeah. yeah is well there's a reason you're doing it can you just help explain it yeah kind i've never the same page i've never you. been good at, at blind following yeah um obviously when i was littler or just younger in throwing and i didn't know as much it was easier mm -hmm. and as you become more versed in it you can be like okay i've seen this before i've seen this before yeah. why are we doing this yeah um i know you know some coaches don't particularly like that yeah um i think all the good ones for the most part you know know how to work with an athlete that yeah. desires that so yeah, well, uh, I think that is advanced coaching. You yeah. get to a point where it is communication. I think a lot of times we're we're wired with team coaches and whatever else. Like just do what I say and yeah. you know, I say jump, you just say how high, you know. Yeah. And just just follow, just do what you're told. I don't want to yeah. explain everything all the time. But high levels of coaching is you know, how did that feel? You know, and there's feedback, right? Yeah. So I do I think, think there is like to have like the uber high success there has to be a little bit of that like we're just locking into this and we're going mm -hmm. just blindly into this path mm -hmm. but i think there is like you have to have that conversations like kind of like blocks throughout the path right like mm -hmm. okay we're going this direction right yeah. Like, yeah okay cool yeah wait we're still going that direction right <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah. yeah that's funny too like you, you circle back again of you know being smaller is an advantage and I mean, first you said that that's shocking to me, but um, I think back like how many people just said I couldn't do things and how yeah. much more motivating that was. Yeah. Did you have any key moments there where you were? Um, I, I know what drove me through most of my collegiate career was every coach that told me I wouldn't be good enough. Mm -hmm. um, which looking back is kind of like a funny concept that a grown adult would tell a 17 year old kid he's not good enough, mm -hmm. which, you know, I understand, you know, it, the collegiate system is a business mm -hmm. it was back then even though you know it's an even more bigger yeah. business now yeah. i mean it's just you know there are adults that have jobs on the line of 17 right. year olds right. deciding to come or not mm -hmm. um and like i look back at the demarks i was throwing and i go yeah i had higher aspirations than what was shown on paper mm -hmm. and so like having that inner balance like i know like watching that and i always thought highly of myself and i competed with and beat a lot of people that everyone said to me they're like oh well, these are the good guys i'm like i yeah. beat them yeah what yeah. Yeah. And i'm like oh no no but yeah. like you don't see the potential in them yeah. like, i beat them every time <laughs> yeah, exactly and so like that kind of developed a healthy chip a healthy mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. i don't know how healthy it was at the time <laughs> but um i think having that throughout high school of just like desire i wanted to be the best like i didn't really grasp a national kind yeah. of ranking system but I grasped in, inside the state of California. Yeah. And for the most part, like most of the best throwers were right where I threw yeah. every, every day and mm -hmm. every weekend. And so like that was huge because everyone told me how good they were mm -hmm. and how like, yeah, you know, you're doing all right. It's like, <laughs> what? And it's like, cause I always wanted to win. Right. So yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. Well, how do you, how do you balance that as a you know, kid in high school? It was hard to, yeah. I definitely was not good at it. Um, but I think like that started it. And then, you know, you get to 
college and then some people are like oh wow you're you're better than i'm like yeah i am and like just feel me more i'm like yeah <laughs> exactly well it's just funny too is uh it's rare that um i don't want to pick on them too much but like you have these u20s and u18 champions that are just wrecking shop yeah and it's rare for those people to make it to the professional like the mat or whatever the open scene yeah um, and I, I went to a, a conference where they were, they had data on all this and it was actually those people like yourself that are like second, third through most of it that just are tenacious and just keep on it. They're not the most gifted young or anything yeah. like that, that just keep plugging away. And they're the ones that end up being, you know, your Olympians and your medalists and all that kind yeah. of stuff. They're not these, you know, the phenoms, which... I struggle with as a coach, especially a place like Penn State, where, you know, like, say a shop where it's like, if you throw under 60 feet, you just, it's hard to yeah, hard give to give you a chance, you know, yeah. regardless of my personal feelings about it, you know, it's just, yeah. as a shop where it's like, and I, I've had plenty of people like yourself, who like, through 55 and in high school, and then are beating all these 60 footers in college. It's just, but we're just at a spot where you can't, yeah, you can't just, take on every 55 meter shop or 55 foot shop or you know? yeah yeah so it's yeah a, uh, it's an interesting, interesting it is, dynamic it is it is I'd, I'd say on like the it is funny on the criticism side because like shot put right like i threw i think it was i think i've told people 59 11 i think it's actually 59 8 <laughs> 59 think, 11 sounds better sounds so much yeah better. it does but i do remember at the meet i was at they had painted lines and i dropped it right on the line so i thought it was 60 foot yeah and it obviously wasn't. Um, but I remember, like, shot put was my, like, one of my worst events I did. Yeah. Like, didn't have javelin in, in California. Didn't have hammer either. But, like, yeah. my family's not yeah. built for javelin. Yeah. So, we're not, yeah, we're not yeah. that body type. <laughs> um, so, that kind of, like, also feel, because I was like, I feel like I'm doing great at, like, everything I'm doing. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, I'm not the best in any of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, hammer in California, I was for the last few years in high school, but like, what's small fish in a small yeah, pond, you yeah. know? So like, and by the end, like, I think I was ranked third nationally out of high school with hammer. I think it was. What um, was your high school PR? It was seven. It was two thirty-two. Whatever that comes out to meters. I think it was two thirty-two. And feet. Yeah, like 70 hide. Yeah. I remember, I don't, all I remember is I went, it went over 230 and I got stoked. Yeah. And then it rained that meet and then I'd never really thrown in rain in California. And so like, I was like, what do I do? <laughs> I'm going to slip. And yeah. I never slipped once in that yeah. meet, but I remember thinking I was going to, so I got real timid. Yeah. And I was like, that, like that meet was going to throw 70 meters. And I did in like my first or second throw. And I was like, I'm going to send this. And then it rained. I was like, oh, <laughs> Which is like a funny change now. Yeah. It's like, I'll throw in anything now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, is, it is funny when you're first learning Hammer how terrifying it is at first. And then by the time you've been doing it for a while, it's not even... Yeah. Like, Especially just like, yeah. <laughs> but as long as you don't slip on your entry, you're pretty good to just get whirling. Yeah, it's probably one of some of the scariest yeah. feelings of slipping on like a third or fourth turn. Because yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. Like, it, I, don't, I can't control anything yeah, now. Exactly. <laughs> like, this is done. <laughs> but, but, yeah, I think those are some of the things that, like, pushed me in the direction of kind of having, like, a little bit of, like, why are people saying this when I feel like I'm doing the opposite? And just trying to, like, like well, whatever. I know what I want to do. Mm -hmm. I know how good I want to be. So, you know, let me just say, screw it and yeah. do it. Yeah. So, definitely helped a lot. Nice. Is there any things that you aren't very good at naturally that you've developed like any skills that way that you feel um there's two big ones that i think of like on the athletic side i think the communication was a huge one that i mm -hmm. developed over time i mean there's still times in which you know i i, I shut down internal and i start like kind of running a bunch of feelings and then assuming those are real thoughts or real actions that happened and then i kind of got to be like, okay hold on that's all been in my head. No one's ever done that or no one's ever said this or I've never said that or done this. Like mm -hmm. those are all fake and I kind of got to shut it out and then start the communication process over again. It normally smooths everything out. Um, but I know like from high school, I was horrible at it. You know, you could just ask my dad 10 seconds. He'd tell me I sucked at it. 
Um, I mean, I kicked the ring more than I said words to him. So, um, but I know like that was a time where I was like, whatever, just throw as hard as I can. Mm -hmm. Words don't need mean, mean anything. And then kind of developing that throughout the collegiate, collegiate career was super beneficial on just kind of like technique progression. But it was definitely something I was not good at when I got into college. I was horrible at it. I remember multiple times I'd have like sessions where I was just super frustrated. Maybe I had like a little bit of like a, like an anger blow up, you mm -hmm. know, just not having a good day. And uh, then like going to my coach, I'm like, oh, my bad. And then the next day I'd do it again. Mm -hmm. It's just because I, I just didn't have like the tools that I needed to, to get through spots like that. Mm -hmm. And so like developing that over time, uh, my brother, when he started going throughout like the end of his um, bachelor's and then into master's, like he was, went into the sports psych field. And so like that helped me a lot because he, him and my dad pushed me in that direction. Mm -hmm. And so like getting, there was a good sports psych at Kansas state when I was there for that year. I think it was only there a year, um, like maybe a year or two more. Yeah. But he was awesome. Like he just, he kind of helped simplify a lot of things in my mind, mm -hmm. which was super nice. And then, you know, since then I've, I've my brother is now, you know, working with the army. And so yeah. I used, I use him a lot to kind of help me in that direction. I think that's helped a ton. Mm -hmm. And then also maturing is yeah. always beneficial. Any specific takeaways from, you know, talking to sports psych? Any um, nuggets of wisdom? I mean, it's like, like the, like the grand old saying of like control the controllable, but it's like, that's so easy to say. Mm -hmm. And then you get in a situation where you want to feel like you can control the uncontrollable. Mm -hmm. And then how do you work through that? And I feel like that's like some of the biggest stepping stones I've done. And so it's just like, building habits in which you're taking the uncontrollable things, pushing them away and then building more controllable things along mm -hmm. your path. For sure. Any specific? I got you. One thing I can that? think of is, uh, <laughs> I used to be like semi superstitious. Um, and so like I would, you know, wear the same socks if I did well on them or mm -hmm. I, I desired to have a meaning for these socks. So I did it or like yep. shoes or shirts or gloves or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. And I remember multiple times throughout my career where I had leaned on that and it normally went the opposite way because it was never the actual cause. <laughs> right. And there was one time, I think it was um, one of the World Cups, women's soccer was playing, um, I think it was, what was her name? Carol Lloyd? Carly Lloyd? Carly Lloyd. Yes. You know who I'm talking about. <laughs> um she says that one thing she does is she sets out like her her boots, socks, and shin guards in a row, not to be superstitious, but to control that mm -hmm. every time. She always has control over it. Mm -hmm. So that like switched my mind with a lot of it. And it's mm -hmm. like, oh, like certain things along those lines aren't like none of these are superstitions. They're not controlling anything. Mm -hmm. You're the one actually controlling them. And so it's like it's not and like for and she said she's like it's not that i always have to do that if i don't get a chance to do that i find something else that i'm in control of and mm -hmm. i do it yeah to show that i'm in control of that moment so there's definitely times where i didn't do that but a lot of times i feel like i've developed a routine of like warm-ups or whatever where i know i'm in control yeah. and i'm knowing doing different things and that helped a ton um and then like another like one of the next biggest things this is probably like the first biggest thing that one just came to my mind first yeah. is like controlling practice environments, controlling how to learn, how mm -hmm. to develop skills. Like that was huge. I think that's just like a huge mental task that takes so many years to develop that like a lot of sports psychs kind of helped me to kind of like build the formula in which I did so, mm -hmm. which is nice because my brain works semi in a mathematical manner. Yeah. And it's like A plus B equals C, let's do it. Yeah. And they're like, and you're like, well, what's, what's A? And I'm like, I don't know, let's do it, dude. <laughs> And so he kind of helped me figure that out and be like, okay, like what's necessary, find the inputs. This input doesn't mean this output. Yeah. Like this is one thing. This is the next thing. They're totally separate. Take the information, move on. And so like definitely times I don't do it, but when I'm focusing on it, it's always been better. Yeah. So definitely like things like that kind of helped build over a long period of time mm -hmm. and still working at it. Yeah. You know, it's something I, I, uh, I'm definitely not diligent enough at, mm -hmm. but it's something that I've definitely, it's, it's been the part of athletics that's kind of, I think, grown the most, that's kind of like helped build on the good things I already had going on, on gotcha. like a com competition side or even like uh, 
like to pra practicing most most of the time. That's where you spend most of the yeah. time, right? So, so what things with like practice mentality do you feel like you? Um, I know when I first got to Penn State, one of the biggest things I think I learned right away is that every day doesn't have to be a comp day. Mm -hmm. um, and I've I've switched my not like molded my view on that where I did a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of range throwing just to try to build and develop skills. You know, it's hard to develop a new skill at a hundred percent. Yep. And so I show it's impossible. It's like 60 to 70 percent <laughs> intensity, which is very low for yeah. a lot of people. So like I, yeah. and so I've had to like, I know last year we did a ton of range throwing because we're developing a ton of new skills. Mm -hmm. And so taking the intensity of a range throw and then trying to put competition effort at it is such mm -hmm. a, like a hard task. And so I think like I've, yeah, like as we developed throughout the year, I know this last year we did, you know, higher intensity things, higher intensity, like just dip, trying to develop into mm -hmm. getting closer to competition speed and trying to, you know, poke holes in practice so we can fix them and then hopefully not as many <laughs> holes when we get to yeah. comp. But uh, I know when I first learned like how to, actually do range throwing and like kind of pull down and like really just dive into like i'm trying to learn practice mm -hmm. is for mistakes practice is to get better mm -hmm. it's not to win a meet because you're never going to win practice no one ever wins so like i mean you can do mini comps i love <laughs> yeah. mini comps but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like sure. in the end you yeah. know it's just it's a mark that you and the people around you see mm -hmm. and no one will ever know if it's true or not yeah. other than the people there so it's like it's a time in which you can make mistakes Sometimes it's hard when you feel like you have a competition between someone, but I think that's where the maturity of an athlete comes in of like, okay, yeah, like there's times and like, you know, being able to like, okay, last throw, best throw, let's yeah. see who can do it. Yeah. And then you go do it and you're like, I didn't have it today. Yeah. Or you can be like, I have it every day. Yeah. yeah. Just prove it. But yeah. I think, yeah, learning to like, okay, let me take a step back. Let me fix these things. Maybe build throughout practice, fix some things early, try to make it do a couple big ones late yeah. or maybe vice versa. Like try to, feeling fresh let me try to send a couple okay my energy's died down let me try to smooth some things out mm -hmm. which that one i'm not very good at but <laughs> um yeah i've done it a couple times yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I think yeah and maybe i'll just jump in and say too because yeah. like the controlling the controllables is a very easy one for throwers to either be great at or terrible at yeah um and the one i say is like your your environment yeah. Like there are certain things you cannot control. The yeah. texture of the circle, the weather, the cage, you know, if yeah. the wind blows the bellies it out or something like that. There's there's certain things like no matter what you do, you can't control those things, right? Yeah. So the things you can control, and you touched on this is my favorite one, is doing a consistent warm up. Yeah. Right. So that's that's priming your pump in a way that, you know, I'm gonna, you know, do my, my warm-up routine, whether that's something physical, that's how you, you put your shoes on, you put your uniform on, that gives you familiarity. You're being uh, comfortable in uncomfortable scenarios because yeah. you're never going to have the same visual cues that you have at home. You know, yeah. There's always going to be things that are out of your control, right? Yeah, shout and, out to David Goggins. <laughs> yeah, even like when you're on deck, you know, like you have some routines there that set that stuff up, you know? Um, and then I think the practice mentality, and this is where I think, you know, with, I, I try to get specifics because I think that most people want to stay at a high level, but the high level to me is you want to believe in your abilities to succeed and you yeah. don't want to be like patsied. Yeah. You know, it's got to be something that's firm. You know, I think that's the hardest part at practice is second guessing what you're doing. Am yeah. I, is this going to equal what I need to be good? Yeah. And just trying to get to a point where your your training mentality is like this is the best I can do with what I have in this scenario. Yeah. And if you can believe that consistently and you're not just blowing smoke, you know. Yeah. This is the firm thing that I need to be doing to get better at that. And having somebody who's impartial that can keep reaffirming this is the best thing you can do. Like if you walk away every session like did i do everything i could to get better you know did i squeeze every bit of juice out of that lemon <laughs> you know yeah. whatever is going on that day and just like hey if i did that then i'm gonna walk away with no regrets yeah and just having somebody who's you know or sports psych or somebody who can keep reaffirming those things and help 
pave that that road for you. Would they say that's fair to say? Yeah, it's definitely fair to those say those two things. I think like, that's like some of yeah. the, the most like it's like the biggest type of relationship you can build with someone of like having like because I feel like the athlete will always be their hardest critic, right? Yeah. And they, if they're not, they're probably not trying right. hard enough, yeah. or there, there's some mis- yeah. gap there. Yeah. Um, so. I think having someone that's outside that cares about your success but can tell you the hard truths yeah. and then kind of fight you when you fight back yeah. is like, at least for me personally, because I've always been a hard athlete, and I'm like, <laughs> you're telling me I suck? Did you suck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we're well, like, it's, the person that can be like, no, hold on, yeah. pause. Like, this isn't a fight. Yeah. But you are sucking right now. Yeah. We need to fix this. Yeah. And then you make, okay, that's, let's make some changes. Okay, perfect. Bring them, we're going the right direction. Yeah. But I think that's like, you know, being uncomfortable being comfortable in uncomfortable positions is like yeah. like I know uh, maybe not to fully segue into the next thing is like uh, I know in high school I hated lifting hated it with a fiery passion I was pretty strong like my family is built in a way where we're naturally pretty strong people. yeah yeah and uh, but I hated the weight room hated it hated it hated it and it just was like because all the reasons that I hated it were all the reason, like all the biological things that were happening to me in a weight room. I was like, it's hard. <laughs> My body hurts after. <laughs> it takes so much time. It's boring. Yeah. And I was like, and so I just didn't, I didn't develop that love. And then when I came to Penn State, I was told by so many different people, like, you're going to get so strong there. And I was like, really? And like, oh yeah, everyone's strong. Everyone that goes there, they get strong. They get, I'm like, okay. So like, I just like made like a conscious system in my head. I was like, all right, like let's get strong. Mm-hmm. And so like for the first, like, you know, three, four, or five months being here, I had to like make a conscious decision in my head of like every day I'm going to push the limits in the weight room. Mm-hmm. And it was like kind of that thing of like, oh, I need to like get comfortable being uncomfortable with how hard I need to work mm-hmm. in the weight room to like get the, at least the strength gains I know I needed to get. Mm-hmm. So that was definitely like another thing that like I had to work at quite a bit where I had a side of like, yeah, there's a natural like I have like a body shape that can get strong mm-hmm. but like mentally I had to like flip that switch of like okay I need to go smooth brain mm. and just <laughs> pound away at some barbells <laughs> like I just yeah, need to yeah. just lock, lock in go mm-hmm. just try to run my head through a wall I know like some of my best workouts is where I'm like I'm gonna run my head yeah, through yeah. a freaking brick wall um so yeah. I know that's always been like yeah but it's always been something I developed for a long time and like, like I know last summer was like, it was the first time I ever did summer training with you. And so like the volume was new and like, it's not that I'd like never done high volume training. Yeah. Right. But I was like, okay. Like in my mind, I was like, I'm going to attack this as hard as I can. Mm-hmm. And like trying to be like semi strategic of like, okay, like I need to push these last sets and I need to do this. I need to do that. Mm-hmm. And being like, well, this sucks. <laughs> Cause for the most part, last summer I was alone yeah. trying to squat, you know, yeah. Like at the end of the, at the end of time, you know, we did over seven hundred on the Hatfields for three. Yeah. So it was like, oh, like that was great progress for yeah. me. But that was when I did that was like one of the first times I had people in the weight room with me. Yeah. So it was like the whole time leading up to that, like you're doing like, you know, five six however much pounds mm-hmm. for you know, you know, starting down in the four hundreds for for tens and twelves, and then working your way up and just like doing that the whole time, just heavy lifting. I mean, man, it just sucks to do. Like, some like the hardest work. Yeah. And like, there's like, you look back and you're like, oh, I'm glad I did that. Yeah. And then time, you're like, this blows. <laughs> My legs are cramping. <laughs> We're on set one. <laughs> and like, you're like, we got five sets to go. Like, this is horrible. Yeah. Well, you, you have a completely flip story for me because I, the weight room is where I found, you know, like, like my, I finally like found home in a weight room, you yeah. know, cause I was like this awkward chubby kid that, you know, never, never was good at naturally good at anything. I just like to work hard and show progress and it was just easy to like, Oh, I'm just going to add five pounds. You know, I did five pounds less last time. I'll just add that in. Yeah. So like that constant, just ratcheting it up. And then I had to learn to actually throw cause that was, that was my struggle. It's like, I'll just try harder. Right. And it's just yeah. like the weight room and it's not, yeah, you know, throwing is is much more fluid, you know, and that's that's yeah. where I struggled at first. So, um, yeah, and I just I will, I'll never forget my my first time is like like say doing high reps or something like that, and I think I did it like say two twenty five. We'll just say as a number. Yeah, 
it hurt just as bad as 275. You know, yeah. <laughs> so I was like, I might as well just go heavier. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's like it's gonna hurt the same no matter. I feel like what. that's like, you know, the mental decision you have to make with high reps. You're like, it hurts regardless of how much weight yeah. is on my back right yeah. now. So it's like, how 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 strong do I really want to get yeah. right now? Yeah, and it's like, that's why I feel like, and that was the decisions when I was younger. I didn't want to make. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. let's just leave it easy. Yeah, so I can throw harder tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. Like, that'd be great. Mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously when you're younger, you recover faster and you have all these different things that like, as you get older, like, I know my back hurt a lot of less in high school. Yeah. Well, until my senior year, but yeah. that's beside the point. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, it's definitely like, it's a weird, it's a weird mixture. Yeah. But yeah. I know, uh, you've, you've mentioned a little bit here, maybe not a whole lot, but, uh, it seemed like you had some injuries that you've had to work through. A couple. Any, any advice for working through injuries? And um, as I feel like I only really had a couple ones. I, you know, knock on wood, haven't had anything crazy mm -hmm. that's had to be like reconstructed or, you know, built up. But I've had a few where, you know, you had to take substantial time off to allow it to recover. Mm -hmm. And then when you're back, you know, you have to, you can't just go full bore right yeah. away. You got to, you know, make sure you're making the right progress and make sure you're doing the prehab, which at first I didn't even know what that was. Mm -hmm. um, I know the first, the biggest injury ever, like throughout high school, you know, like hand pain throwing shot, you get used to it. And, you know, you throw one off your finger, you feel like you just broke your hand in half <laughs> and you're like, oh, this sucks. Yeah. So like little things like that going up, just like tweaks, this and that. But then I know going into like very end of my senior year of high school, I, on my PR thrown shot, heard my back pop. And I was like, well, that's weird. And then nothing hurt. On the drive home, I felt stiff. Mm -hmm. And then that next week was a week gap between what is, what's the Masters meet in Southern California, which is the meet right before a state championship. Um, and like, so there was a week gap that I had. And that whole week, like, I was just like crying because my back hurt. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know why. Mm -hmm. And just like felt like it was broken. Like any torque I'd put on it just hurt. Um, and like later and then so like that progressed did that and then when i got to kansas state that same pain came back um and then they realized i had a couple i had a couple stress reactions and degenerative discs in my back and it's just like okay what do mm -hmm. we do and then like you do rehab every day so like i didn't know and so luckily i'm like a pretty like like you tell me what to deal to it like mm -hmm. but like tell me we're, why we're doing it you know mm -hmm. so it's like you know, like we do we you need to get your course on i was like okay so every every morning my freshman year, like even before I went in, I was like, hey, like back hurts, it hurt, it's better, what do we do? And they're like, and then, so they already started this. And then when we got the diagnosis of like, yeah, like, because I know after one practice, went down in the train room and they were like, kind of like fixing it up. And I got in my car and like, just like what you'd think, I think like this is more like a disc thing, right? Like when the, when you hit the nerve shooting down your legs. Mm -hmm. But I remember I was sitting in my little Honda Civic and I remember I tried to take my foot from the gas to the brake and like my whole body locked up. And I was mm. like, this is, this is wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what happened? And then you go get the uh, MRI taken. And they're like, yeah, your back's messed up. You gotta take some time off. And I was like, that was like the hardest thing. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I feel fine. And you pick up a hammer. It doesn't feel fine. Yeah. Um, but that was like the first time I ever had to like do the process. And so I know like every day it was just like a routine of like just chipping away at it, chipping away at it. I was like the first time I ever got like true core strength mm -hmm. to where I was like, yeah, like I have a strong core. I can do these exercises for a certain amount of time. I can do these different things. Like there's things I remember doing after I'd gotten healthy and I was continuing to do stuff with the trainers, like doing boat holds. Like I could do it for a minute. Mm -hmm. I try to do that now. I'm just shaking. You know, <laughs> I'm just like thinking of different things like, oh, like that, you know, it's where, you know, the rehab then becomes prehab, which then becomes just being a better athlete. Mm -hmm. I think definitely like things that I've been able to apply from those early experiences, like when I busted my foot up, um, and then like, then, you know, uh, at USA's and pre meet, um, oh, yeah. our year, yeah. you know, getting my lat kind of messed up, which is like, well, how hard do you want to push yourself? I think that's like the biggest thing, that an athlete can tell themselves and each person has a different level. Mm -hmm. 
I've always wanted to push myself to the farthest limit. And it's like once I once my body can't stop, is when like once my body can't go anymore is when I'll stop. Yeah. And I just wanted to find those limits all the yeah. time. Yeah. I know when I first started working with McKay, um, he was like, Oh, well, you know, we need to find limit. I was like, No, throw me until I drop. It's like I want to find where our limit is so mm-hmm. we can pull back from that. And there were times where I was like, yeah, we found our limit. But <laughs> but then I'd be like, well, was it really our limit? And then I like, push myself. <laughs> and so, you know, there's a couple of things probably came yeah. from that. But like, I think in those instances is where like you determine what kind of athlete you want to be. So I know like in USA's, you know, there wasn't much thrown that was going to happen after. So I was like, well, we're going to throw regardless. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, I, you know, we had some decent success at the meet, which was cool. Um, but I think throughout those times is when would you, you throw, determine. Would you throw a 70, 71? Yeah. yeah. It was pretty cool. No entry, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd say, like, outside of your entry, like, that's some of the best technique you've had, which is kind of surprising, right? Yeah. So um, it's just like, I just think those, I think injuries are when you can determine what athlete you're going to be. Yeah. Because it's like one of those, because it's like, I can't do my sport anymore. Mm-hmm. And I have to now determine, like, how hard do I want to work to get back to the thing I want to do? Mm-hmm. And so a lot of injuries break people, you know, and they're like, well, you know, I was struggling when I got hurt and now I'm done. And you're like, okay. Yeah. I, I, I've always seen it the opposite way of like, well, I have, I have not seen my full potential. I know my potential is more than that. And I have to get around this obstacle to get to the next one. Mm-hmm. You know, there's moments of like anger, grief, whatever you want to call it throughout, yeah, the, throughout yeah. the path that you kind of <laughs> yeah. got to work through and each person has their own path. But I've always found, like, throughout injuries, like, knowing what your goal is and then focusing primarily on that and what gets you to that. And mine was always, like, I want to throw again. Yeah. I've always wanted to throw again. Like, I have not found my limit yet. If I don't do it again, we're not going to find it. Yeah. So, like, just doing those different things. And I know when I hurt my foot in, I think that was 2021, 20, um, it was one of those things that was like, I told one of the doctors, I was like, just throw on it till it breaks. Because it was uh, a bone, it was a stress reaction in my navicular that just was like, I was like, if it was like, would it break if I threw on it? And they're like, it could. And I was like, is it guaranteed? They're like, no. I'm like, all right. I was like, is it going to hurt? And they're like, yeah. And I was like, all right. Was like, so you're just telling me I have to toughen up? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, all right, let's do it. And so it's just like different. You know, it's not like what everyone should do, but decisions I made. Yeah. So when when did your back flare up um, your freshman year? Was that preseason, in season? Um, preseason. So I, I... How much time did you have to take off to? It was a full... It was at least a full month of rest of doing nothing. I couldn't do anything for a month. No lifting, no throwing, no, like, only rehab stuff. Mm-hmm. Just just core, some mobility stuff, that's all I could do. And it was all based around tolerance at the mm-hmm. time. And because it was only, like, discs and stress reactions, like, it came back mm-hmm. relatively fast on, you know, uh, range of motion. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't, like, bulging or herniated. So yeah. it was just, you got crappy discs, let's get a stronger core. So, like, that, you know, those went away quick. And so it was, it was about a month of nothing. And that was weird. Because it was like, you know, you're in this limbo land of like, yeah, I'm doing some exercises, but I'm doing nothing of the sport. And you're getting to the point where you're like, I feel good. Yeah. Like, let's do something. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, didn't listen to all the doctor's orders throughout the time. Like, I know I uh, would go to like the rec with people on my dorm floor and play volleyball. And probably not the smartest. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody should do that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But... I know it was like in that time it was like a weird headspace because like I feel good to go. Mm-hmm. They're like, no, hold up. Yeah. Um, and then throughout, I think like about the next, I, I want to say it was a month. I don't remember super well. Um, just kind of building up, doing half sessions. I remember I argued with Watson a lot because I was like, I feel good. Why can't you? He's like, I can't let you. Yeah. And you know, those are, you know, policies within place yeah. for a reason. Um, well, it's nice to have athletes like that, though. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, it was just like I was like, dude, I just want to do more. I just want to go. So the reverse, but so like those were. It was definitely. It was a weird that that off time was a yeah. weird time. Yeah, because it was just like, yeah, I'm making progress, but like I can't do the thing I want to yeah. do. So what what things do you feel like? So you were hungry for it. And I think there was a learning aspect too, right? Technically, yeah. and you know, obviously, you're working on 
these are gaps I got to fill in physically. Because um, yeah. you still, you made it to nationals, right? You threw a PR at regionals. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's, that's why I want to highlight some of that stuff. Because like you, you get hurt and you're, you're told like, okay, you stress react your back and you have degenerative discs and, you know, potentially bulge discs and, you know, like, well, let's just get strong. And then you had to take time off. Then you were half sessions. And a lot of times people would just kind of scrap that year. Yeah. You know, and I think that's something that, you know, I think props to you to. <laughs> I think one <laughs> thing, like within that mindset of like, so when I was getting recruited, I told everyone I was going to go on a church mission. I told everyone else. It was one year and done to start. I was going to be gone for two. I told everyone that throughout high school recruiting. And so I think what helped me in that scenario is I gave myself of like, no, I have to do it. Yeah. yeah. Um, where, and I think that's something that really everyone should have every year. Every year, yeah. It's not something that should be just like, oh, I got two more. I can I wanted those you to instead. say it, not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, I, think, I think that's something that, that yeah. you know, looking back helped me a ton, but it's how I should have approached every yeah, year. Yeah. Like you shouldn't scrap a year just because whatever. Yeah, right? that's, that's one of my biggest pet peeves. It's like, well, there's next year. It's like, no, no, take advantage of everything. And I think that's another thing of like, yeah. what kind of athlete do yeah. you want to be? Yeah. And I always wanted to prove myself how good I thought I was. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it was definitely an interesting thing. And I know, you know, throughout my career, weight's never been my strong suit, but I was able to kind of work through weight pretty well, which was nice, you know, through just over 19 meters I was a freshman, which was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. You know, it's definitely not standout season, you know, of, of crazy freshmen, but um, no, there's some monsters that have come before and after me <laughs> yeah. that I am not on the caliber no, I mean, of. But, 19 as a freshman is which never, was, that was, never a slut. That was pretty cool, yeah. um, which was... And it's funny because, like, the, throughout freshman year, there's so many different roadblocks that I can look at. Like, first time I was ever told I can't go to a meet was my freshman year mm -hmm. because it was a it was a try meet with Kansas State, uh, Kansas was it? Yep, KU. Yep. And, you only have two people. And Wichita, yep. so it was only two yep. people I could go. And uh, I was not the two, and it was clear. It was yep. clear as day I was not the guy. I was the fourth at that yep. time by a long shot. Yep. Like, I, was, I just was the fourth. Yep. And, like, I didn't like it. In my mind, I was like, I'm not the guy. That's not me. But it, like looking at it, like, yeah, okay, I'm not going. But it was it became a blessing in disguise because it was like, okay, now I have two weeks till my next meet. I don't have, I'm not throwing the next weekend. I have to just prepare for it and try to throw far there. So I was like, okay, well, I want to throw far. I don't want to get left from another meet. Yeah, like that's a, it was a sucky feeling. Mm -hmm. And so like it kind of flipped my switch of like I, I don't want that to happen. You know. Yeah. And so I was able to kind of build up through 18 the next meet, which was nice. And then eventually led to being able to go to more meets and then progressed mm -hmm. and throwing and then we'll throw in the 19 we went to arkansas yeah which was pretty cool yeah but then there's like that kind of a setback and then you know just kind of progressing throughout the year that regionals was a crazy year throwing a throwing a, it was just under a pb oh okay. it wasn't a yeah, pb yeah but right there but it was the last throw and i know marked the other two there were actually giant fouls over the fence at, at Kansas in the brush <laughs> dirt pile. Yeah, yeah. And you were about weather. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the the if anyone doesn't know <laughs> there was yeah. almost a tornado that came down. Yeah. Hurricane type winds. Oh yeah, sideways wind. I know I warmed up on the day of the competition I warmed up three times. Yeah. Um we had three warm up sessions <laughs> for that stinking yeah. comp to then be told, no, you're throwing at 8 a.m. Yeah. the next day. Yeah. Or maybe it wasn't 8, but it was early the it next day. It was early the next day. That's like, yeah, the West region got to experience some of that this year in Arkansas. Yeah. yeah. Like, which I don't know which one I prefer. Probably the one I had. Yeah. Because, you know, staying up till I think it was like, what, one or two yeah, in the morning started, when they, when they, they started, started like, <laughs> yeah, the final flight. Yeah, I think I'll pass on or that. Something like that. So, um, but yeah, I have a very different version of it because I had Adam Keenan at yeah, that and he took yeah. his one, one and done and we went and like, he's like, oh, I want to take more. I like, think we went to like Smash Burger or something. <laughs> We're just sitting in there and watching the sideways rain. He's like, no, I'm good. It's like, yeah, yeah that's your spot. It was, uh, <laughs> I remember sitting in KU's like giant rec facility that they pushed yeah, everyone yeah. to. And you're just sitting there. It looks like a disaster zone because yeah. every, every <laughs> athlete that's there and most of their families are just yeah. laying around this yeah. giant indoor yeah, facility and, and yeah. it just looks like you just got hit by a hurricane <laughs> yeah, and everyone's exactly. houses are gone yeah um but yeah so that was definitely it's cool to like i mean you pointed out and it's yeah. something i haven't thought about in a while of like you know 
year was definitely not ideal by any means. Yep, yep. And then, you know, being able to throw a big throw in a face of a lot of people that told me I wasn't going to do yeah. it was pretty fun. Too. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> how, did, how did you hurt your foot? Um, when did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> it was... It was probably one of the most devastating things. Everyone makes fun of me for it, but it was like my season flashed before my eyes, and I was so yeah, sad because yeah. I was throwing so well at the time compared to the year prior because it was the year after COVID. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, all right, I have an outdoor season. Let's go. Because mm -hmm. indoor didn't go 100% how I wanted it to because I wanted to make indoors. Never did, but that's fine. Yeah. But it was like, okay, let's go. And so I was doing hurdle skips okay. just on the outside. And so I think someone was talking to me, so I wasn't paying much attention. I was just trying to get warmed up. And I go, I go up, and my toe's pointed down, and just f kind of folds. And yeah, so, like, did a ballerina type of toe. Yeah, and just yeah, absolutely yeah. just crushed my ankle. Dang. But because of that, yeah, I sprained my ankle, which hurt. Yeah. But I have an auxiliary navicular outside of my actual navicular, and so when it did, it just crunched my bones on the outside. Gotcha. And uh, yeah, I did not feel. I thought I broke my foot in half, or like yeah, broke yeah. my ankle, because yeah. I like couldn't put weight on it. It felt fat. Yeah. Because it did get decently black and blue. It wasn't like mm -hmm. a crazy, crazy stuff like that. But I was like, man, this just hurts. It doesn't mm -hmm. feel like a sprained ankle. Yeah. And um, what so kind of year was this? The week of the first outdoor meet. Oh, wow. So that sucked. Yeah. And yeah. so like we uh, took that week off, obviously, because I couldn't really put any weight yeah. on it. Um, and then kind of just try to progress through the season as best as we could. Cause it was one of those things. It was like, I can throw far this year. This isn't what's going to hold me back. Mm -hmm. And I remember we taped it up real good. I took as much caffeine as I could. I mean, not really. I don't take that much caffeine when I go yeah, to throw. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we went to a meet in Florida and I threw, and it was just one of those things of like, I'm like shaking because I took so much caffeine trying to wind. And, you know, tried to get a, a regional mark so mm -hmm. we could take time off throughout the year. Mm -hmm. um, did that. But it was, like, one of those things, like, yeah, like, I'm throwing on, like, half a cylinder right now. Yeah. And, like, I'm getting decent, you know. So it was just, like, one of those, like, bittersweet things. Like, okay, we got the mark. That's going to be in regionals. It wasn't anything crazy. I think it was, like, 74. Uh, not 74. 74. 60, <laughs> 60, yeah, nothing crazy. <laughs> it, was like 60, it was, like, 64. <laughs> it was, like, 64, like 64 meter high yeah, or something yeah, like that. Yeah. So, I was like, okay, that's going to be in regionals. It's never not been in regionals yeah, before. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, we're in. So we took a few weeks off, tried to, you know, did a whole bunch of rehab, trying to get my foot right. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> eventually put in a boot. Not eventually, but I think it was, pretty yeah, yeah. recently put in a boot i just wore that boot for the rest of the year and just did a whole bunch of just like ice in it and just kind of built up the protocol that would allow me to throw mm -hmm. um once again not what should be done by everyone um but i remember to find how hard i could push my foot we would just throw until it didn't react anymore because mm -hmm. it was my right foot and so it being able to kind of stay down and have pressure through my feet and then be reactive off a catch. There was times in which my foot couldn't move fast enough from pickup to put down. And so I was kind of lagging and it was kind of just soft and I was just didn't have any catches. Mm -hmm. It was kind of like how we were like, Oh, I think the session is done now. We can't yep. throw anymore. Yep. Like, it's just not your foot can't do it anymore. Yep. So that was nice. Cause you could see that kind of build up, but it was funny walking to a meet in a boot and like, why are you here? Yeah. I'm like, Oh, we'll be good. <laughs> But that was also like a decently hard year because it was like, okay, come back. Foot's in the shape it's in. Mm -hmm. But we threw, I threw 66 for like three meets straight. And I remember we went to uh, Ohio State and I'm just throwing 66 every throw. And I'm like, I swear these are better throws than this. <laughs> and just every throw is just 66, yeah. 66, 66. And like I threw one, I was like, that's got to be 68, right? 66. And I'm like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I swear I threw probably like three or four throws at 66 that meet. And I was like, this is stupid. And then going to the Big Tens, had a giant, you know, three meter PV yeah. on my last throw, which was super cool, which then kind of like springboarded the end of the season because that was 2021 trials. But it was also, I uh, that 69 kind of gave me the confidence. I knew I could, like I always knew and desired to go to nationals every year. That was like a goal I had coming into college. And so I was like, that kind of springboarded me of like, oh, like, I'm going to go do well at regionals and we're going to go get a good spot for, um, to get into nationals, mm -hmm. which 
that was a shaky regionals as well. Got in on my last throw on that one too. <laughs> um, it was kind of like a hope and a prayer throw. I threw it and I was like, that's not a good throw. Yeah. But it went 67 meters. Yeah. Got through. So I was like, that's great. Yeah. But then NCAAs throw 70. So to like kind of have that season of like, start with a giant rolled ankle. Yeah, Don't really yeah. know why it's not Show good up better. in a boot. <laughs> yeah. And then to be able to throw yeah, 70 yeah. and then go to my first ever USA's and it was being at the Olympic trials was like, yeah. that was one of the coolest years so far. I'm just like, mm -hmm. oh, because, you know, I none and like in the NCAA, I got ninth that year. So like making finals for the start was like really cool. Mm -hmm. But then going to USA's, it was just like, it's a fanfare for me. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, yeah I want to make the finals, but I made whatever, it. whatever yeah. happens, happens, you know? <laughs> so that was cool because yeah. like, like, I could take the step back a bit. Yeah. It was a really cool event. Yeah. yeah. But then, you know, now it's not, it's still extremely cool. It's one of my favorite. Like this last year was still one of the coolest things because yeah. like, there's nothing like a, yeah. a track and field yeah, on yeah. the trials. There's no other year that compares. Yeah, yeah. And he made the final there. So yeah, that's first ever. So that's yeah. cool. Yeah. So just, yeah, there's a lot of, I feel like just like throughout all those different times, it's just like, what athlete do you want to be? And what's your goal and how hard are you going to work to get there? Yep. So it's just like. Well, uh, I think that that's, that's the skill. Like, because I, I was, I never knew the exact timelines on this. So it's good for me to hear that stuff too. Because a lot of times, like hearing your response to injury, like, like it's just elite level, right? <laughs> you know, like, like I'm just, still going to get it done. You just know, like it's. I don't know. It's just like one of those things of like, I think <laughs> being a younger brother is nice too. Um, you know, you get beat up as a younger brother. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, well, got to bounce back. Mm -hmm. doesn't feel good. <laughs> but, you know, it's just one of those things of like, yeah, and you do it at all costs because why not? Yeah. Well, you, you've talked about it too. I think your, uh, your motivations can be up and down at different times. Like you roll your, you hurt your ankle right before your first meet, but like, your so your motivations are up and whatever but your dedication is like you keep mentioning that like i want to be the very best you know i want to be yeah. as good as i possibly can and no matter what that looks like i'll just find a way right yeah and i think that that ability to adapt and still do what you can in this time that you have and that's that's i think the big takeaway right like yeah you would say because there's going to be hurdles, there's going to be obstacles, there's going to be things that yeah. aren't ideal, uh, like hurting yourself, right? But like being like that committed to, I'm going to make sure that I still accomplish what yeah. I want. Which, you know, you probably ask any teammate and coach throughout any of those times, and you know, I'm not always the, <laughs> you know, funnest to be around in those situations, but those, my, my desire throughout it all was always that. I'm mm -hmm. just like, how am I going to get back? Yeah. Cause like in my mind, like the goal to try to do big things and throwing mm -hmm. was just like, that was like my end all be all. It's yeah. like for most colleges, like academics was always a super important part that I chose through, but I always paired it with like, yeah. how do I be the best yeah. athlete I can yeah. be? And it was like, which one you know makes is the best. Yeah. But it was like, you know, I always wanted to be like, well, how do I be the best yeah. athlete? Yeah. And then where mixes is the, <laughs> it was like <laughs> athlete first. Yeah school second but make sure the school is is, is useful <laughs> yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you know, make sure i'm at the right spot mm -hmm. but so i think like making those decisions early and like having that in my head and then also like i think what helps me make those decisions easier is like support system was mm -hmm. top notch yeah definitely something that i've never had to struggle with which not everyone can say yeah. that i've been really blessed with yeah. that so so um, so why, what do you attribute that to like why why is it so important to you to be good or what What's is that a learned skill or is that just kind of your? I don't know. I I know I know. I've always been super competitive. Mm -hmm. Always, still am. I'm I'm less now, as a dad. <laughs> yeah. Not really though. <laughs> I mean, I don't yeah. I don't like losing. Still, mm -hmm. um, I don't think I ever like to lose. I think it was I think ha being the younger brother is helpful mm -hmm. to build that because being the younger, like especially with like, my oldest brother, like we clashed heads a lot when we were younger. But I think, it, like, but I always, like, idolized him. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I always wanted to be him. Mm -hmm. And so I always wanted to, like, push myself in that direction. And to compete with someone who's six years older than you, mm -hmm. like, you're never going to really beat him. <laughs> so, until like, now. <laughs> like, yeah, until you can, like, look back and be like, oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's, like, one of those things of, like, how do you, like, how does a six-year-old compete with a 12-year-old? It's just, mm -hmm. like, how do you do it? Yeah. I remember, like, when we were younger, 
we would uh, wakeboard a while. We go on, we had a we had a boat when we were younger, so we'd go out in the boat. And I remember mm-hmm. like like even through those situations, is I was just extremely competitive. Yeah. I was like, oh, my brother can do that. Like I want to do that. Mm-hmm. And like those aren't as much of a physicality skill. It's like just like kind of like a skills you build, which mm-hmm. you know older can be beneficial. But it was just like, oh, you can do that trick. I want to do that trick. Yeah. You can do that trick. I want to do that trick. And then there's some I was like, nah, we'll pass on that trick. <laughs> um, but I think it's like things like that, like being a younger brother was definitely helpful. But sports was always super big in our family. Um, so that's, I think that's more of like a parent's thing. Like they always mm-hmm. encouraged us to do a lot of stuff. And I know my parents always encouraged us, like if we're going to do something, like do it to the best extent you can. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely something I learned, but also had the encouragement outside of that where there's definitely a lot of times that I saw friends that didn't have that, that possibly had better natural skills than I did in something, mm-hmm. but their parents were like, Oh, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. And you know, there's, you know, con- like conflicting ideas for that. I'm very grateful for the way my parents raised me. Cause it was like, okay, like looking at it now, I mean, it's the same way I want to raise my kid. Like if you're going to do something, do the best you can. Cause why, why are we doing it if you're not? Right. And uh, I think there's a lot of life skills you can build out of that. Even like if it's only for that year or for that time, like however long you do it, do it well. Um, so I think it was like a mixture, yeah. you know, it's like I think it's like the biggest mixture of like nature and nurture there. Yeah. Cause I definitely to this day without having them or I still want to beat a lot of people at mm-hmm. a lot of things, you know, like right. I want to prove myself. I think it's also kind of a younger brother trait of mm-hmm. like wanting to prove yourself that you're as good as your older brothers. Um, mm-hmm. But I think, it has that kind of mixture there. Um, but I don't necessarily know. You know, I my parents would definitely say better where it started. <laughs> I've always been kind of a hothead, but I yeah. think it was because of my desire. I wanted to win, yeah. and I didn't like when people beat me or didn't allow me to do certain things that mm-hmm. I wanted to do. Right. So I think having that bit of a fire, like I know uh, my dad always says he loves this story for some reason, that when we, were, we played roller hockey growing up, and uh, I scored a goal, and they got mad because I didn't score it the way I wanted to. Mm. It's like we just scored a goal, <laughs> and so like <laughs> I, I don't I don't know where I learned that or why I thought that way yeah. at the time, but I got mad and I was like pounding my stick, yeah. just like a complete idiot. <laughs> well, there's a pickiness there, right? I yeah. think I think you have to be picky, and I I think really good athletes are very picky because they want to do things the right way, right? Yeah, they don't want to just have mediocrity. You know, if, if I can, if I can do it better, I want to expect myself to do it better. Yeah. Um, and the, the thing I always come back is why, you know, like we have these very highly motivated, uh, highly like, you know, they're just motivated. That's, yeah. I'll just say it that like, like, why are you so motivated to be this good? You know? And, and you're yeah. like, well, I just, I've always been that way. Or I've, I feel like that. Yeah. I think most of the time it's because like you said, to start, you know, to bring a full circle is when people say you can't do something, yeah, sure you makes know, sure makes you want your motivators. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's definitely. <laughs> so like, it's so interesting because it's like a, it's like the biggest mix ever. I know I've had many coaches throughout my entire life that figured that out. Mm-hmm. That I am like fueled off of people telling me I can't do it, mm-hmm. and so they play to it, and I'm like, screw you, dude. <laughs> um, which. I have mixed feelings on that. <laughs> You're right. Um, well, it's it's tough as a but, coach, right? Because you got to motivate in a way like that, but you also got to be on the same team. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. it's it's such a tough balance. It's like ah, oh, you can't throw seventy five. Yeah. Like oh, sh- I'll show you. I'm like <laughs> <laughs> now we're super motivated. Okay. You know? It's like, but at the same time, it's like coaches, I can't do it. Like, well, you never want to be that coach either, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so it's definitely it's, definitely a different. Yeah, it's a tough balance. It's a hard thing to do on any level, right? Yeah, have, especially especially this this day and age, you know. Yeah, you it's gotta, definitely a we're in the, we're in a world of safe spaces at all the time, you know, and like hey, we gotta still push people, and you, yeah. you hope your teammates are like your competitors. But in Throws world, everybody's so nice to each other. Yeah, <laughs> you know? it's just one of those, it's, it's like one of those things. Of like <laughs> I've I've always told a lot of the uh, like younger athletes like like i think in in ncaa one of the most competitive meets in the entire nation is the regional meet not the national meet right and not saying that the caliber is as high as the national meet but the competitiveness i think is bar none because there's people from the third flight that think that or from the first flight that think they can beat the people from the third flight and so everyone's gunning for everyone's head yeah 
in a meet with 48 athletes. Yeah, 48 people. So like, all... and, and they're all talented, yeah. you know, different talent levels. Obviously yeah. there's some that can walk up and do their normal routine and they just breeze through, mm -hmm. but you have to be willing to do the normal routine in the right, right. way. Right. And so like, I think I've always said, I'm like, yeah, like I like to, you know, go and shake people's hand, be nice to people. But like when it's time to throw, like I'm going to yeah. cut their heads off yeah. real yeah. quick. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, I'm not, I'm not hesitating on that because yeah, no. it's like, well, it's, it's competition, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like, it's no time to be nice. <laughs> right. yeah. But you know, I also don't, you also don't have to be mean, yeah. which is like a weird thing. I know when I was littler or younger, littler is not really the yeah. correct word. I'm the same size as <laughs> <well>. <laughs> so. But uh, I know in, in high school, at least, like I didn't like the people I competed with. Yeah. And that like fueled me. Yeah, for Where, sure. Like I don't, I don't like that feeling inside myself at least yeah. anymore. And so I've tried to like change that a lot. So I have to like kind of flip a switch when I get in the comps and like be like, okay, like, execute 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 like, yeah. what are we doing to execute and execute at the high level and then just kind of like shut out people yeah and so like you know you can be nice give them a little fist bump you know if they're your friend or whatever but at the same time being like i'm just gonna beat you I'm like <laughs> yeah, sucks to exactly. suck dude great <laughs> job but i'm gonna beat it like just having yeah it, having it is that. it is funny like you you need you need those negative emotions those are it's just like it's such a weird it's the thing that i know yeah from the time I came to Penn State, it's something that I've tried to adapt in myself because I don't, I was angry for so long yeah, when I was yeah. a kid. I tried to like adapt it and I'm like, okay, like how do I, how do I change that within myself, but get the result I need? Yeah, yeah. And it's a very like right. up and down effect because there's yeah. times I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm like pissed right now, but I'm yeah. also doing the best I ever have. Yeah. It's like, okay. But I think it's just like, well, why, like how do you find the yeah. motivation that it takes you know, when you're angry outside mm -hmm. of being angry. Yeah. But it's all just about motivation and whatever can drive you to that. Not yeah. that anger is always bad. Well, I, yeah, I, I'd say like, you, you got to take it, you got to take things personal, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is classic Michael Jordan. Yeah. You got to take it personal, right? You got to like, if, if you fail at something, you got, you got to take it personal, but yeah, you know, that's, that's where I say like, it's, it's hard in like this safe space area to yeah. be like, be okay with failure but taking that personal but not too personal to yeah. where you beat yourself down yeah. it's a weird balance right so like you know i i expect myself to be better yeah yeah and i'm taking that personal to make sure that it's important to me to to be better yeah you know 100 yeah. percent. and it's definitely if you if you like shirk off a failure you had you're not you're skipping an opportunity to grow right and if you like, I think it's another thing, like, what kind of athlete do you want to be? You want to be an athlete that sees your failures and is like, mm, whatever. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't really want to win anyway. Yeah, you did. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes, you did. Everyone wants to win. <laughs> yeah. Everyone has a chance to yeah. win. They want to win. Yeah. And so like, I think it's the weirdest thing when people try to say like, uh, like, it's all just about the process. And I'm like, I understand it's not all about winning, yeah. but why are we competing then? Yeah. It's to win. Yeah. You want to win. You want like, there's very few people who are like, I'm only here to have a great time. Yeah. Like, yeah, I want to enjoy it, but winning's super fun. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot more fun than losing. <laughs> it can still be fun to lose. Like when I was, was the runner up, I was a great man. PR, I did great, but I was also so like, gosh dang, I was so close to winning. Yeah. Right. You know, I got beat on my last throw, so it's like, yeah, dude. <laughs> right. And so, but I, but I can look yeah. back and like, oh, it was a great time. Yeah. But I'm still like, well, what could I have done to win? Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I've I've thought about that for since then, really. But it's like one of those things. Like, well, how? Like, if you don't want to win, sports really isn't for you, right? So, <laughs> like, there's rec leagues for a reason. <laughs> exactly. Well, even then, that people go to history. <laughs> yeah. So it's and like they're they're walking around wearing those rec champion shirts. Yeah. Like so, it's just it's, like that's. Uh, yeah, all, all levels, right? I mean, it's true. It's I've seen true. Olympic champions who wear their medal less than some people yeah, who yeah, sport yeah. those, those <laughs> rec champion shirts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But I think that's just like, yeah, yeah, it's super important to be a great athlete. You know, if you don't want to be great, it's not for you. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. Like, what level do you want to go to? I think that's like a, one of the biggest things that I had to learn of like, it's so easy to say how good you want to be. And so, like, in, like, the, like, what have I had to learn? It's like, okay, I've always desired to have these huge aspirations. Like, I always, I always shoot for the moon, you know? And, like, normally I pick a goal that I know is, like, if everything goes perfect, I could reach it. Mm -hmm. But everything's not going to go perfect, but I'm going to act like it's going to go perfect. Something goes wrong, well, it's going to be a perfect path after that. Mm -hmm. So it's like, okay, what, and just pushing yourself to that high level. But it's, like, determining what kind of athlete you want to be along the way. 
It's like, how hard do I, like, to be as good as I want to be, I have to make these sacrifices, I have to do these things. And I have to, like, make these decisions to get there. Mm-hmm. And if I don't, and I decide I don't want to make those, it's me consciously being like, well, I guess I don't want that goal anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And it's kind of like a hard, like, internal fight you have. It's like, well, I do want to hang out with my friends. Yeah. But it's like, well, you can have both, but you got to be the best planner in the world. Right. <laughs> or you got to start making some decisions, yeah. or you got to, and you got to be like, oh, well, I can hang out for an hour because I got to be in the gym for three. Yeah. Like, it's. Yeah. What, what things do you feel like you've had to sacrifice to be good? Um, you mentioned time with friends, maybe. Definitely. It's, it's, it's something that I think hindered me because I desired to have so many. I think it's something I still kind of struggle with a little bit because i desire to do so many things in my life Mm -hmm. and so it's like well i can fit them all yeah and it's like really you can't and it's just like you know like you can't serve two masters at the same time you know it's just like well where do you where do you go with it Mm -hmm. and so i think i i think it's kind of shifted throughout a lot of different things like uh like really like there's like four main really big things i've desired in life and it's like sports family friends and then well, i guess family friends put that together and then like i really value church you know mm-hmm. faith mm-hmm. and so it's like those have been things and i've noticed like where i put my values the other ones always drop mm-hmm. and so it's like if i'm dedicating a lot to track i know those are going to take it down so i think i've definitely like missed out on a lot of social opportunities but i, I look back and it's like well i look at my friends that had all those opportunities and i go I like my life better. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's just, it's about where you put your value. And I really valued seeing my uh, self excel within sports. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's another, like, it's, it's really easy to hang out, you know? Like, right. it's something easy to do. Yeah. It's really easy to be like, yeah, I'd love to sit on the couch and just yeah. chop it up yeah. with my friends. Yeah. And so it's like, yeah, it's easy. So it's harder to make the hard decision. I think that's where a lot of young athletes fall into of like, where, you know, it's so hard to tell all my friends that I've known for many years or I'm trying to make new friends and like, well, how do I tell them, no, I can't come hang out with them or go to this party or do whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, it is hard. <laughs> yes, it's very sure. hard. Well, the, but, and the tough part is, is it's not measurable, right? Yeah. Other than your resolve. Yeah. Like it's your internal commitment or your internal yeah. resolve is like, no, maybe it won't affect training tomorrow. But I'm not going to risk it, right? Yeah. Or some version of that. Or, yeah. and or I think, like, I need to be that guy who says, hey, it's 10 o'clock. It's time I, I you know, dip out of here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And that's, that's hard sometimes to be that person. But, like, yeah. when you go train the next day, when you did that, your resolve to, like, make that sacrifice worthwhile is an important decision, right? Yeah. I was, uh, I'm yeah. putting words in your mouth, but that's, I know no, the moments super, that I felt super that. important. Because if I sacrifice this opportunity because I made that decision to go be good as an athlete, and this is, I'm going to make sure I have that day be good and I didn't waste that opportunity. Yeah. Right? And, and there's definitely you, times yeah. where, like, I've made that decision of, like, no, I'm not going to, you know, go hang out till midnight tonight. Yeah. I'm going to, you know, I'm just going to stay in. I'm eat my dinner, maybe watch a movie and go to bed. Mm-hmm. You know, just have my night, not very complex, whatever. Yeah. Right. Make that decision. And, uh, then like that next I've had practices where it's like, man, why is the dude that was out till three in the morning? Why is he kicking my butt today? <laughs> right. But then like throughout that I've, I've seen like, well, I, I have like, there's obviously days where, like I just didn't have it today. Mm-hmm. And then the next time I'm like, I'm kicking his butt a lot worse yeah. than he did that yeah. time. You know, so it's yeah. like having, you know, definitely hindsight's always 2020 on, on right. many different decisions. Yeah. I've always enjoyed knowing like, okay, these were my priorities. I made them my priorities. And, like I get to see the results later mm-hmm. and like go through it. And it's cause always like, I feel like it's hard to take a look back while you're in the middle of doing it. Mm-hmm. I think it sometimes distracts you. Right. I found it always distracting for myself where it's like, okay, let me just bulldoze through this and just kind of try to like, just, just continually better throughout the season. Um, and then being able to like, you take those, you know, however long you take off after a season and then like look back and be like, Oh, those decisions were worth it. Right. So then it kind of like reaffirms it for the next year of like, yeah, like I do not need to make those decisions. Like they're not as hard to make anymore. I yeah. should say. Yeah. 
it's like, okay, yeah, like I, those are easy decisions to make. Yeah. yeah. I definitely think there's a few things that happened throughout my collegiate career, like getting married in my collegiate career was a huge benefit on priorities. Yeah. So it was like, okay, there's one major priority that just came into my life and that one's, that one's up top. Yeah. And so it's like, okay, like it's pretty much like I go to school, I train, I go home to her. That's about every day. Yeah. So it was like, I had, I had, that was very beneficial. Not a lot of kids get that in college. Mm -hmm. Not like it's desired either. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think, but everyone thrives under appropriate priorities. That's like, regardless of who you are. Cause, right. Cause even then, like not everyone's going to desire to be the very best at what they're doing. Some people just want to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And if that's your desire, it's hard to be around them when you're desiring to be the very best. Cause they're like, well, I just want to have fun. You're like, mm -hmm not what I want to do, so go away. <laughs> and yeah. so it's like, but they're thriving to their max level mm -hmm. of what they want to do. And you know, sometimes they're like thriving in school where like, I know I was never, I never struggled. I got decent grades and maybe, you know, average to a little above average. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I made some sacrifices in that area because to me, it was more important to be successful in the, in, yeah. in the ring where some people may not see that they're like, I want to be most successful in school. And then the ring comes second and that's just yeah. a priority they got to make. Yeah. So, so you, you said it's all worth it. I do. Yeah. I, <laughs> what, what's I, made it worth it? Like, um, I mean, it's, it's easy to say like all the accolades that I've, and I'm not even the most decorated thrower mm -hmm. by any means, right. you know, but being able to see myself achieve the things I knew I could mm -hmm. is what really kind of like affirms it to me. Mm -hmm. And like I said from the beginning, like when I came into college, I wanted to be a great thrower. Yeah. Like I just wanted to prove myself. Like being a professional athlete was like, I mean, the dream. Like when, when, uh, like throughout all of elementary school, like once yeah, the teachers, too. once the teachers <laughs> got tired of you saying you want to be a professional athlete, yeah. you came up with something else. But like yeah. the first instinct always to me is like, like when I was playing hockey, I want to be a professional hockey mm -hmm. player. I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. You know, looking back, probably wasn't gonna happen. But like, mm -hmm. you know, Southern California is not a like. Well, at least where I was in the situation I was. It's yeah. not the biggest hotbed yeah. for hockey players. But, uh, you know, there's some great ones. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just think it's, like, one of those things, like, that's what I wanted to do. And so being able to, like, okay, like, I am progressing towards the direction I want to go. Um, and looking back, like, I know, like, you become wiser within sports as you progress through them. And so, like, I know I had these giant, just monster, like, jumps I was going to make. I was like, I'm going to throw... 65 this year i'm gonna throw 80 by the time i'm like, done with college and you're like <laughs> looking at it now it's like well that was lofty yeah. goal but you didn't yeah. understand what's going on but i think having that mindset of like i want to achieve big things like ncw records 80 meters i want to throw 80 meters yeah yeah it's like cool yeah and then as you go through it it's like well how hard are you pushing towards that and then you like get through your season you see where you were at the end of the season you go okay well this is what i did i still have this desire to get here like what do i make it what's yeah. the changes and I think, like, what's made that worth it is being, like, I, like, you know, I think not achieving, like, these grandiose goals I had right away, mm -hmm. I think was very beneficial and just, like, the progression-wise. But I think also, like, all the small things along the way, like, I went throughout college, I, I loved travel trips. Loved them. For sure. I think... uh like ha hammer being early for travel trips is probably one of the coolest things ever throwing discus made it a little more difficult to understand uh but like being able to throw as hard as you can right away and then be on a trip basically yeah. was like some of the coolest things you yeah, could do yeah. in college like things like that and like having you know, like your great friends you get to like you make along the way of like people that you've put in the sweat and work with mm -hmm. I know there's like some of my best friends have come through throwing, mm -hmm. but I think some of them, they've become some of my best friends because I know that they were trying as hard as they could. Mm -hmm. And I normally got mad at them when I knew they were not trying as hard as I knew they could, yeah. which they probably didn't like that I would say it or <laughs> think it or, you know, well, that's it's hard to teammate though, for sure. But I think, I think those are some of the things that make it like super beneficial. Cause like I put everything into what I could and I feel like I've reaped just an immense amount of rewards for it. Mm hmm. Because even then, like, just talking about just, like, as a student athlete, like, my student side really didn't get hindered much at all. Mm -hmm. Like, I got good grades, enough to be able to get into a grad school, and then I did well in grad school while still continuing to, you know, do sports. So it's not mm -hmm. like it was, like, uh, like 
giant hindrances. Like I wasn't trying to, you know, become a doctor during, you know, mm-hmm. like I made certain decisions so that yeah. I could excel athletically. But I think having like the main goal be the main goal, I think helps the other things fit in where they need to be. Yeah. And I think a lot of people try to make too many things the main goal and they, they like sit there and they just kind of sputter in mm-hmm. place. And they're like, well, I want to be really good in track, but if I'm really good in track, I'm going to suck in, in school. And you're like, that's not true. Right. It's not. You may not be even valedictorian because you're trying so hard in track. It's just it's time constraints. But yeah, like, yeah, well, you have time, but also like there's transferable skills. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that that's the thing that people... Just trying hard is trying hard no yeah, matter what you're yeah. doing. I think they're transferable skills. And like, yeah, there's, there's a threshold where the more you do in that is not going to make you that much better. You know, like the first three hours of studying might be very beneficial, but the next three probably won't be as beneficial, right? Yeah. But knowing like you can transition into things and, and develop that or like, Hey, I, I know like this is the end goal. I got to get this score on this test. Yeah. And knowing like, Hey, I'm going to get it to this point where I'm good. is the same transferable skill to get yeah. better as a, as a, as a hammer thrower. Where yeah. a lot of people are like, oh, I'm just not going to try that hard and conserve. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Normally they're conserving in, all areas. Yeah, you're conserving all the time, right? And that's yeah. that's the learned response. So, um, and, that, and yeah, like I think it's easy to say, but um, I think you've shown that you it works, right? It, it definitely and definitely can. You don't you don't have this decorated career, like you said. Like yeah, it could have been better, but yeah, uh, you don't regret it. <laughs> you no, know? no. You've done all like, the things we wanted. You've accomplished <laughs> everything, other than some of this set accolades, but yeah. like mission accomplished in a lot of ways so yeah like i know um like getting second last year with you know seven not last year two years ago uh with 73 high yeah. in, in big 10 oh, hammer yeah, yeah. was like you know the biggest shot to the gut i've ever taken but also looking back at it it's like wow still probably one of the farthest ever yeah. second place yeah, yeah. guys in big 10 history yeah. you know so it's like uh, it's definitely there's a lot of cool things to look back on. I mean, it sucks being just a classic silver medalist, right. um, but at the same time, there's a lot of dudes that never got even close. Yeah, and I'm. It's nice to know, like, yeah, I did try hard enough to get to those positions yeah. to do so, and like, like I'm honestly jealous of the way the Big Ten is now because like I would love to compete in that mm-hmm. now. It's like it's even better. <laughs> right. Like you tell me it's, yeah. it's better. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah, it's just one of those things. It's like it's just a. And it's like once I like got the grasp on how big um, things could be, I was like, well, then why not we go to it? Yeah. And it's like you know, I guarantee, like, well, I've I mean, I've told people forever that like my main goal, you know, within throwing was I always wanted to achieve being an, being an Olympian. Mm-hmm. And like people probably look at me and they're like, yeah, good luck, buddy. Yeah. Like we see ya. <laughs> and it's like, well, you know, I I I bet I doubt a lot of people thought I would get as far as I had already. Yeah. So it was like. You know they're not ever in control of the driver's right, seat right, better so right and there's a lot of people that you know you could look at and be like well they're not as talented as i am maybe and mm-hmm. they've achieved it so it's yeah. like i mean it's not i think once you like get a chance to put in as much work as i had or have mm-hmm. um like you get to see like it's very doable mm-hmm. and uh just like having that like at least right now, like having a bit of time to just kind of sit back and look at it and be like, man, there's, there's a lot of good that have happened, mm-hmm. but it's fun because you get to look at it and like having the mindset that I've developed, it's like, well, there's still so much more can be achieved mm-hmm. and there's so many areas where I can improve. And it's like where some people part, like I know when I was younger, like, like when I got to train with, with uh, Sean Donnelly, I remember when I was a freshman, he was, that was his last year in college. I remember watching him and I'm like, Phew. This guy's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's this guy's one of the best that's ever done. Yeah, this, is, yeah. this is awesome. Yeah. And like watching him, like as a freshman, I'm like, oh, he throws perfectly. Mm-hmm. You know, like he does this and this. He does, you know, like throwing against Nick Miller as a freshman um, was like, oh, just Nick Miller. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then later, like, continue to throw, and he continues to throw, and he's throwing 80 meters at one point, mm-hmm. and Sean throwing 79 at one point. Being able to throw against those guys see my progression then eventually be able to train with Sean was like mm-hmm. just having that and like yeah it's not yeah it's not as hard if you're willing to put in the time yeah, yeah. but it's really hard if you're not willing to put in the time <laughs> <laughs> yeah and make the sacrifices I, yeah. yeah the hardest the hardest part is uh, 
to me is making the changes like the the uncomfortableness of uh like this is what i'm good at is throwing this way yeah and, like i gotta change that I gotta, yeah i gotta develop this somehow and be better somehow yeah. and you're going from this place of confidence to these unknowns but like he like said watching donnelly throw 74 was like this crazy thing and they're like i'm right there i can do that too yeah so it's just so, like, so back then, break. it was unbelievable. Yeah. There's no yeah. way I could throw, throw, you know. throw 58 in practice. <laughs> yeah. I'm just like, yeah. this is crazy. Yeah. You can throw 70, that's yeah. real. And so tapping into yeah. like, oh, this is the next steps for me to get there. And, and I have to do these uncomfortable things. I have to make these sacrifices to, to get to that point. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's definitely, it's funny. It's like the sacrifices definitely. I, I know uh, a funny story is when I, made the youth olympics in high school uh for discus when i was at the olympic games um i met the u.s rugby coach for u18 mm -hmm. guys and i was friendly with like all the rugby players because they're just nuts dudes and it was just fun to be around yeah. and he goes hey you want to be a rugby player i was like yeah i want to be a rugby player dude <laughs> and like I, I remember i came back right off the plane dad super stoked to see me i was like dude, i think i want to be a rugby player he goes what hey what so who would I work for? <laughs> and I remember being like, you want me to be a road player? Then invite me to be a road player, man. <laughs> and, uh, but like, in my mind back then, I just like was, and throwing was still super fun, but like, it was a fun thing, but I was like, I also love all the other sports. I'm just a huge sports guy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, like, I want to do this now. And he's like, no. <laughs> He's like, it's not even a realistic goal. Like, it's like, you know, looking back, like, he's like, he's like, sorry, I said that. But like, it's, it's like, a, uh, it's like a thing I think I've also developed and like, I think maturity is just a huge part in all of that. Mm -hmm. um, because you could be like, oh, like, that takes time, just like this takes time. Mm -hmm. Like, it's a rare case if someone just has the athletic ability to do whatever they want. Like, there's right. not many Bo Jacksons that walk around the world, you know? So, like, right. like <laughs> yeah. those, are, those are a dime a dozen. Just, yeah. It, not dime a dozen, though. No, one dime in a million. Dime yeah. A rough, yeah, yeah. One in a million. Yeah. Um, that, uh, you know, it's hard to do. And I think that's just like something like taking the time, making the sacrifices. Like, I know in high school, like, I think my dad helped me learn that a lot. He would drive me to a hammer practice. Um, and I, I, I had practice with through 70 throws and like at the time I'm like, oh, just keep throwing, just keep throwing. Mm -hmm. And I remember looking back, like we'd throw for four and a half hours. Right. We just got there and we threw until we couldn't see the hammer fly yeah, anymore. Yeah. And like, I just remember looking back and I just, like taking breaks, eating a granola bar, like <laughs> taking a drink for a second. He's like, are right, you ready to go again? And we just keep throwing. Yeah. And I was just like, we had like, it's like doing three sessions at one. Yeah. But it really took these like little snack breaks. Yeah. Like in, in my mind, I was like, oh, I was hungry. Yeah. And then he was like, dude, did another 20 throws. Like it's just, and like, I think those different things, it was like, well, I've done it before. Why can't I do yeah. it now? And like, yeah. I think experiences and then maturity and then, you know, just all the different things we talked about. It's like allows it to be like, yeah, yeah, these decisions are now easy because of all the blocks I've already done before. Yeah. yeah. So it's just like building the history of it makes your present so much easier. For sure. Yeah, well, there's a lot of a lot of words of wisdom and stuff in there. But any anything else you'd want to yeah. say? Um, no, not much. Not much more. There's a lot of nuggets in there. A lot, think, a lot, uh, a lot of little nuggies. Find find a way. You know, have have a a firm goal. I think you're, you know, you're watching better people. It seems yeah. like you're a visual learner. Yeah. See, and I think that's a, just a good skill to see who's paved it before and what can you learn from them, and then also find your own way of doing it. Yeah, I think get a good balance of that. I think you know. Yeah, I think so, a funny thing with throws is like with like the paving your way. I always find is an interesting concept because right. it's true to a certain extent, but I think a lot of people want it to be like I'm going to do it on my own. Like it's not possible. Right. Really. Like yeah. it's like yeah, it's possible. You're going to take a long time to pave that road, though. <laughs> I've always like found that like the middle ground is normally where the greatest success happens. Right. It's like, yeah, you take the best of this, take the best of this, and you put it together. A lot of times it becomes better. Yeah, yeah. Not all the time. Yeah. And you got to readjust. Yeah. But I think that's like been a thing that's helped me having a lot of really high level coaches, mm -hmm. being able to take the best pieces. And then like, just like the belief of like, yeah, a lot of people are yeah. going to say, I can't do it, but let's yeah. do it anyway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Proving people wrong, make you, make your haters, your motivators. Yeah, you know, 
It's just a fun. If, if you have a, a nice place, like find your own like way to motivate yourself, you know, yeah. uh, make it personal. Like there's a lot of <laughs> trying to sum all these up. Like what other, what other things, uh, yeah, being good at stuff takes sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. Be okay with those sacrifices. You've, you've shown that you can be good in the big three, right? Sports, school, relationships. Yeah. It is possible. Yeah. It is you know, It is possible. Maybe not 500 relationships, but having a good core of, you know, yeah. people that you yeah. want to be involved with. And then you're also Mr. Penn State with a lot of people and... You know, knew a lot of the team, and we're friends with yeah, you know, Walter and you yeah, know, I think it's people like that too. So I think that's like a like an outside like skill that comes from trying to be like we said, it's like transferable across mm-hmm. across so many different things. Mm-hmm. Like if you're trying to be good at this, and all of a sudden you see no one wants to be around you, it kind of sucks, dude. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there's obviously something right. not yeah. it, it's mixed wrong. Like there's isolation normally doesn't equal like supreme yeah. accomplishments yeah yeah um i mean there's times in which that i, I do believe that is necessary because they can also be extremely distracting right um but it's a it's like a i know during covid i trained at the local high school by myself most of the time mm-hmm. and that sucked because it wasn't because like because even then like it was that time at least like i was like supreme isolation right mm-hmm. and so like not many people around not many people being able to be in contact with see blah blah blah, blah, blah yeah. right and so like i think that in a normal world is like uh like the same thing i'm just being like, like if you're trying to be elite in one thing you're gonna be good to great in the other stuff mm-hmm. and that's just kind of it just happens through osmosis. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like... Well, it's funny. You're, you're saying this stuff. It is lonely at the top. Um, you know, like, you, only one one person can win, you know? Yeah. Um, there's, uh, like everyone says, like, a uh, second place is first loser. And there's one winner and the rest are losers. Yeah. And, you know, like, we're in, we're in this realm of medals are all that matters or top yeah. eight and NCAAs is all that matters. And... Um, it's lonely there, <laughs> you know, yeah. not many it's people a, are going to do that. The majority are the ones that are, you know, not doing those things. There's got to be people that lose. So. Yeah. Yeah. So you got to do everything you can to make sure that's not you. Yeah. And over prepare and things. And I think that that's, it's a good little nugget maybe too as well. Yeah, I think so. it's, I think it's also something that yeah. like, uh, like the way you work builds the environment around you a lot of times. Like a lot of my, like I said, a lot of my great good friends that I've made up. I mean, throughout the different event groups with on, with on the team that I was on, like, like, uh, Luke Knipe, who was my pole vaulter buddy. Like I liked him a lot because I saw the work ethic that he had, yeah, yeah. you know? So it was just like one of those things of like that initially drew me towards him. Cause I'm like, mm-hmm. Oh, like this guy knows how to work. Yeah. That's rare. Yeah. You know? And then you get to know him and oh, it's a good guy. I like this mm-hmm. guy. You know, and the same way with a lot of different throwers on the team. Like when you see people putting in that work, it's really easy to spot. Right. And then once you become the guy that works at hard, it's really easy to spot people that are not working hard. <laughs> but when you're the one that's in the limbo, you're like, are these the guys that work hard? Are these mm-hmm. the guys that work hard? I'm confused. Yeah. But if you're showing up every day, you're going to notice when someone's yeah. not there. Yeah. Normally people don't like when you tell them that they weren't there, but yeah, it's really easy to figure out like what caliber you're in. Well, that's what's tough though, is because all that work doesn't necessarily guarantee success. True. Yeah. But I don't think you ever regret that. And no. so I want, this is a lot of why I do this podcast, you know, <laughs> nobody regrets it. Nobody sits around and says like, yeah. ah, I, I regret no, you know, yeah, I regret like, working you know, hard. Once, <laughs> once, uh, once my athletic career is done, like the main thing I want to know is that I gave it everything. Yeah. Yep. I mean, because the worst thing you could ever have is regret. Yep, exactly. So it's just one of those things like, yeah, I gave it every chance I could to be mm-hmm. successful. And then you get to sleep well at night and yeah. tell your kids how you're great, but not yeah. the best, maybe. Yeah. Or and maybe the best. Who knows? Well, and then, like, you're like, well, maybe I didn't get there because I was smaller or I didn't have resources or something like that. You're like, well, I just did the best I could. Yeah. And at resources. least you get to say, like, the well, resources I had did the greatest yeah. thing I could. Yeah. Exactly. And the body I had did the best thing I could. Yeah. You know, yeah. being able to make those decisions and, you know, develop throughout that, I think, is, is like, the ultimate goal within throwing. Oh, for sure. Or just sports. Yeah, life, for sure. You know, for sure. everything. <laughs> and it's like, yeah. you know, I think some of the people that, you know, desire external, maybe like, you know, uh, fleeting things are normally the ones that like haven't decided to go full into one thing mm-hmm. or, you know, had a chance to do that or, or whatever it might yeah. be. 
Um, but even then, you know, some of the most happy people in the world, they're trying their very best at something, regardless of how, you know, what mm -hmm. level they're at at it. Mm -hmm. But they're like, I do everything I can, and I do everything I can in this, and they have the joy through it, which I think comes into a lot of times, like, the pro like the journey is what's most important ever. But I think it's because you know you've done everything you could. Man, I still like winning better. It's <laughs> just so much better. It's so much doing. Winning, winning is pretty fun. Winning it's, is fun. Yeah. It's like one of those things where, like, yeah, like you're having fun doing it now, but do it when you win, and it's so much better. <laughs> yeah. No, that it's like. But you know, yeah, sure. same. Like I've never same. done drugs, but <laughs> it's, it's literally like, yeah, it's, it's addicting. Just, you know? it's, yeah, it's just yeah. one of those things, right? It's like, you know, like people always say, like, you know, like there's plenty of people that win and are unhappy, but yeah. at the same time, it's like taking everything we've talked about. And, you do it right and you win. It's awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, even second place, pretty decent. So yeah, yeah. For but sure. uh, yeah, yeah. That's about all I got. Anything else you want to say? I think it's about it. Yeah, I think it's about it. Cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time. I yeah, know. Of course. I know you're busy. Got a got a family and moving and stuff. So a lot of life ahead. Yeah. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of craziness. <laughs> yeah. All good though. Yeah. Oh, thanks. That's I appreciate this about. having having the time to to catch up and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Anything else? We'll call it there. Yeah. Call it there. Cool.